about that a lot, but there's six people, and right now there's people from all different countries. So, And when I was up there, we had a, a Russian astronaut, uh, a German astronaut, and a French astronaut, and American astronauts. We had four different countries, and we're all one big team. You know, we work together, we solve problems together, we eat together, we laugh together, and uh, it's really neat to be part of that team. So, How do you talk together? Yeah, generally in English, although the Russian segment is done in Russian, so the folks who live up there for six months, they need to learn Russian real well, so they can talk with the Russian Control Center, Whoa. and the Russians know English pretty well, too, most of the cosmonauts. Writing. Yeah, so we have dual language here, so we have Russian and English on here. They've yeah. added that one since then, they added... It would probably work a little better if it was a There's only six left, so I'm not a... Our trainers, that, again, they're the cockpit trainers, so they're, they're the, the full size and everything, which is really nice. And they can be rotated on their on their side so that they're pointed up like on the launch pad too, which is really good. So we can do strapping exercises and, and uh, emergency escape exercises and stuff like that. So this one is a full fuselage trainer. This and is the size of the shuttle. <clears throat> that's the size of the shuttle. I know it's that big. Now, does anybody know how much it costs to launch a pound of payload Whoa. into orbit? A pound, a, what? a pound of payload. How much does it cost to launch a pound of payload into orbit? I don't know. My taxes just. <laughs> About ten thousand dollars per pound, right, Steve? Ten thousand dollars per pound, and we launch that thing into space. So you know how expensive it is. <laughs> so, yeah, too tall can. Be a problem. the tallest you can be? Six something. Six. There, we have people that are at least six two or six feet. So I think oh, it's pretty. Okay. It's pretty big. So if you're seven foot, you're not gonna be an astronaut. Wait, wait. No. <laughs> My wife wanted to be an astronaut, but she's five two, and you said that she couldn't. No, they said who said that she couldn't? <laughs> NASA. Oh, yeah, there's, there's, you there's, did. I, I, yeah, personally, I changed my mind. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, right, so, See that? You can, yeah, now you can be one. Too, yeah. So this is the, this is just the one front of the... Yes, yeah, so we're going to go up here in a second, uh, upstairs. Oh. That's where the flight deck is. That's where the windows are and where the pilots oh. fly. Where is this while you're on that? Uh, this, we, we launch on this. So this this is the, the, the space shuttle. So this is right. our launch vehicle. So we... The space station is going around the Earth, it's orbiting at 17,500 miles an hour. We launch and then we catch up with it and we dock onto the space station. So we take this and we dock and we use this hatch here to go onto the space station. And this stays up there while you guys are on? Well, yes, while we're there we stay with the space, the space shuttle stays docked and we take it home. You always want to have the same amount of seats that, yeah. that, that, to go home as there are people on board. We always have a lifeboat on the space station, whether it's the space shuttle or the uh, Soyuz spacecraft. So the folks that are living up there now, there's six people up there and there's six Soyuz seats. There's two separate Soyuz lifeboats that they can take down. If anybody got sick or there's an emergency, they can come back to Earth. So there's always a way home. How long will they take it back to Earth? Yeah, they, can get, they can undock pretty quickly. And once they undock, they can usually get back in, in a few hours if they needed to. Wow. And, and the space shuttle, too, we can, once we do our deorbit burn, it, when it's ready to come home, we do our deorbit burn about an hour before landing. And that just slows us down. And then we get back in the atmosphere and we start flying like an airplane and we can land that way. So you just we're screen, yeah. So all that energy we put in on launch has got to come out during during reentry, and so you, you it it really gets heated up because you're going like it's like a blast furnace. You're actually tearing the air molecules apart as you're going through them up high in the atmosphere. And you leave this plasma trail several hmm. several hundred miles long behind you. You feel the vibration when the engines come up at six seconds before launch. So you just feel this vibration. We don't go anywhere until T minus zero. So for six seconds, the engines come up and you feel this. this this you know ten story building which was you know just a while ago just nice calm you're sitting like this also and the whole thing shakes and the team minus zero boom you feel the solid rockets light and then you're going for the races and and the G forces build up very quickly to almost two two and a half G's when it's when you're on the solid rocket booster it shakes like a big dog. And then at two minutes after launch, this, those white swallow rocket boosters, you see them, they come off yeah. nice and gracefully. And it looks real gracefully. And that's where the windows are nice and they're not so nice. Because yeah. when that happens, all of a sudden you hear this big boom as this, these, uh, these pyroelectric bolts are, uh, are fired. And they, they, they sever the, the solid rocket boosters from you. And then these rocket jets push off from you. And so what you see is this big orange flash, a big boom, and then flames trickling around you in the front. You're going, wow. Oh, so, oh, it's like right. a train wreck, you know, but it's really cool, but it's really like, holy cow. Like, this, is so, <laughs> this is supposed to happen. Yeah, exactly. So, hope, hope, you know, of course, you know about it, people tell you about it, but it's pretty impressive when you see it for yourself. The solid rocket boosters come off, and the G-forces drop down to about 1G again, but you start accelerating again. And as you use the gas in the gas tank, that big orange tank is the big gas tank. As you use more and more gas, you're getting lighter and lighter, you're accelerating, you get to 3Gs, and at 3Gs the vehicle actually has to throttle down because you're going so fast that the vehicle can't take the acceleration anymore than 3Gs. So 
For three Gs, it doesn't sound like a lot. In a, in a fighter jet, we can pull nine Gs sometimes, but that's usually for a short period of time. So in the last minute or so of ascent, you're getting shot back in your seat at about three Gs, and it really feels like you're getting pressed back. And it gets a little bit hard to breathe, and you realize you know, it's going to ticking down, it's going it's to stop here in a second. So at eight and a half minutes, you know it's coming, and the engine's cut off, wham, and it feels like you get you know pulling forward, you know, because all of a sudden all that thrust is gone. So the whole thing can kind of brace yourself. The first mission I did, and, and I felt like I was tumbling, you know, so it was really a strange sensation. But then all of a sudden everything starts to float. You know, Wow. This is really strange. Yeah. So. <laughs> wow. it, gets, it gets just quiet. It, well, if you hear a lot of fans, kind of like you do now, but even more, there's a lot of fans here, so they're never perfectly quiet. Same thing in the spacesuit. When you're out spacewalking, if people aren't talking to you in your headset, you have a headset on your head, then the only thing you hear is the fans. And that's a good noise, because the fan ever stops. Then it's a really bad thing. So, don't want so that fan's a nice noise. So you like to hear that. Um, wow. but it, So it's not perfectly quiet. Wow. I know this is you guys can hear this. Has anybody ever just floated off in space where you have to like get them? No, no. What happens when we do our spacewalks? We have it. That's a good question. How do you how do you handle that? We have when I go into space, I hook up to a, a, a piece of structure with, a, with basically a retractable tether. It's like a dog leash or a vacuum cleaner cord. You know, so when I go out, it pays out to about 85 feet. So I can go a long ways. And if I ever let go on accident, and I would I would pull my tether back and I would grab back my structure. Okay. Now the question my kids ask and my wife asks, what if that broke? You know, okay, well, so yeah. that's two mistakes now, but if, if I went away and I accidentally dropped off, and now all of a sudden it got the end and it broke, now I'm free from it, and that is a bad situation. But we have the last line of defense is called a safer. It's a, it's a jet backpack. It's kind of nitrogen jet backpack. You, you, you hit a lever and, and, a, and basically like a Nintendo, you know, uh, no a hand controller comes out. You pull it out, you throw a switch, and it stops you from tumbling, and you face the space station. And you push yourself back in. You only have a limited amount of gas, so you got to practice it. You practice it in virtual reality, I'm sure. And then once you get back, you know, you, you put another tether on, and you, your spacewalk is over. So. Right. <laughs> you can stand on the seat. These are my hands. So yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. This is what we call a quiescent vehicle. It's flying. It's not going launch and landing. So we can do stuff with laptop computers. The ground can do a lot of stuff. But here, it's older technology. This is 70s, 80s technology when it started. Uh, okay. um, and so a lot of it causes interface. I mean, the way we talk to the computers, for instance, if we wanted to change um, abort item four, we have to go item four execute. I mean, it's a keypad. It's really kind of strange. But when you think about your four, G, you know, three Gs, and you're shaking, it's, it's not easy to. to you don't want to have a mouse here and try to. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> It's called a command path failure. If you shut this, if you push this button to shut the engine down, you actually blow it up instead. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it'll be an uncontained shutdown. So on certain thing, if certain failures, you have to use these buttons over here. So if you want to, <laughs> that shut shouldn't them be an option. Button, right. So you, you go basically here, shut down the electrical power, and then push the button. So there's a lot of little gotchas like that. Like I say, it's an older technology, so we have to be careful. Um, that um, when they dump the doo doo out of space, that it can resemble what looks like a shooting star. So many couples have romantic moments and kissing to the astronauts' doo doo. Oh my gosh. True story. True story.